the timer will be counting elapsed seconds, so each tick will represent one second. Remember, we want to be able to pause the timer as well, so we need to have a way of preserving the time that already elapsed. So let's declare variables first. So up here for the form level, we will declare two variables. So the first one will be the elapsed time and it's going to be of type time span. The time span type allows us to easily format the time for hours, minutes and seconds rather than just displaying everything in seconds. So when I hover over it, you can see that it's a struct and it represents a time interval. Now the elapsed time is a total of time that elapsed. But like I said, we need to be able to pause the timer. So we also need a variable that will hold the amount of time that elapsed from the previous timer tick or when the timer was paused. So I'm going to create another variable, I'll call it last elapsed and it's going to be of type date time. So the type of this variable is date time which has several useful methods and the one that we will be interested in is the now property as you will see later. Alright, now we are ready to create the timer event. We will set up the timer to change each second. So how do we set up a timer with Windows Forms? Well, it's actually very simple because timer is an object that we can simply place into our project. So I'll go to the form design and in the toolbox. And by the way, if you don't see the toolbox or lose it somehow, all you have to do is go to edit, I mean, sorry, into view and select toolbox right here. Anyway, from the toolbox, all you have to do is scroll down and you cannot see it from the, from the screen here, but on the bottom after the text box or towards the bottom after the text box is a timer. So all you have to do is drop it on the form. Now, it doesn't actually drop on the form like the text boxes or buttons did. But as you can see up here, or down here actually, it is part of the project. And the form has access to it. And we can access its properties just like the other elements on the form. So let's click the timer and bring back the properties. So the timer properties, as you can see, there's only few, there's the name. So I'm going to change it to TIM timer, TIM for timer. It doesn't even have to be named because we only have one timer, but I just don't like to call it timer one. Now we want it enabled to be set to false because when the form starts, we don't want the timer to start automatically. We only want a timer to start when we click the start button. And the interval, we want one second intervals, which is 1000 because the interval is in milliseconds. So 1000 milliseconds is one second. So we have our timer, we have the properties set. So now we are ready to code the timer's functionality.